everybody welcome back to my huge channel no guys okay so hello 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 welcome back to my huge channel of course everybody um don't forget to subscribe if you like this channel and the content i create today uh you see me in my um middle school teacher outfit i have three i have the truck driver uh, the philanthrope and the um, middle school teacher and today I thought since this is a bit educational I might look like that as well it's actually my dad's wardrobe simply okay so today we're talking about Gap I think it's one of the most influential brands of the 9th, 20th century <laughs> okay sorry of the 20th century uh, when it comes to mass culture and its effect on our consumption and our vision of aesthetic and and how far did gap even have any influence on design probably on our perception of style definitely so i want to start real quick in 1969 on ocean drive in san francisco uh, fisher um, decided to um, literally fill the gap like this is how the name occurred it was to fill the gap i mean i i don't know i mean i thought it just stands for gap like um general american performance stuff like that i don't know but it was literally it was even called the gap and it was uh, supposed to fill the gap between the boomers and um the people who have experienced war and uh, since the style was wearing petticoats or uh i don't know what the other half was wearing but they just tried to fill the gap and the gap was actually the jeans so um gap the store was actually selling jeans and not their own they were selling lavis jeans and some music vinyl plates like music since it's something in 1969 i think it's not possible to not be if you want to be cool probably to do anything with music and i I, th I think that was also one of the reasons um, why he put them into the store because he wanted to be make it a bit more attractive and they were only selling men's jeans because it was really hard to find your own size of jeans back then and I mean we don't have to discuss the revolutionizing and democratizing effect of jeans on the on pop culture on any demographic in this world so um, my parents are watching Turkish news and are screaming again yeah, I think it took them like 10 years to actually really design their own their own fashion with their own labels on them. Uh, but uh, to that period, they were selling jeans and a few other things as well. And it was pretty popular. They opened like 200 stores immediately in, in America. And it was like a super extremely well-working uh, brand that was very much known for its affordable yet good quality clothing. That was actually very norm core, you know, it was very much still like pants, shirts and sweats and nothing else. So something that we assume now is something very American probably. So I think the biggest move that Fisher made that was the most influential one for Gap was uh, deciding to do this together with Mickey Drexler. So if you think Mickey Drexler sounds most certainly like a very much villain coming of a Disney movie or something, I think so as well. Mickey Drexler is the person, he's a pioneer of merchandising and knows very well, especially in when it comes to mass market. Uh, he was coming from Ann Taylor, also a very successful brand in the US back then. He got into a very important position, I don't know, like what do they call them, board member, anything director at Gap and he changed a lot of things it took him one year to um, make the brand profitable again and he's very famous for starting everything from zero if anything is not working he's just destroying everything and starting anew because he knows how it needs to work actually and he's also the reason um, i think at his time um, he definitely had the influence um, to create new campaigns, especially the one made in 1989, Individuals of Style, which is to me personally one of the most beautiful, I say beautiful because I don't know if it's the most impactful, but I think it's one of the most beautiful, easy campaigns I have ever seen because it's just a photograph. Uh, they were shot by uh, Annie Leibovitz and Patrick de Machinier. 
and I think the one shot by Annie are the more famous ones because it's Whoopi Goldberg and Joanne Didion. And as you remember, Joanne Didion has also been the face of the campaign of uh, Celine, I think 2012 or 13. Uh, the one shot by Jürgen Teller at, in the Phoebe era. So apparently, I mean, of course, she's one of the most influential writers of the decade, but uh, she has been in more than just one fashion editorial uh, campaign. And I think, uh, but she usually chooses the ones that are very portrayal. So it's about her persona. And you see these people and I think there is, I mean, they have Lenny Kravitz, they have Sammy, no, Sammy Davis, sorry, wasn't the one coming afterwards, but they have like, um, the most greatest people of that time in their campaign it's black and white photography very strong very beautiful photography i would say and but not shown in a like cliche beautiful way but to me personally from my aesthetic point of view beautiful campaign yeah and they just describe the simpleness of fashion because i think what i love the one with demi Moore. i think she's wearing like a corset kind of dress uh, i don't know it seems like it's it could it's probably not your but um like from a very much designer couture label probably and then she's wearing the gap jeans jacket and this has like demi Moore 46 dollars gap jeans jacket and i love it so much because it shows so well uh, how you can just style these pieces who are so norm normcore these pieces are so easy and they actually they have like no connotation you cannot even say it if it's good or bad style about this jean jacket you cannot say it about their shirt their pants nothing at all their khakis the corduroy nothing because everything is so simple and easy and what i love in this campaign it says it shows that your personality is the thing that counts we make i wouldn't even call it fashion we make the textiles the clothes for you you all wear the same but you are all so different different from each other and i think this campaign had a huge impact definitely on the image of gap because it was the first one ever to have like of course such a big repertoire of people uh, who have like of course achieved something uh, but back then i think it was one of the most beautiful especially for instances for the mass market campaigns and yeah they were huge and i think in 1993 they had the wore khakis who wore khakis campaign which is also beautiful uh, i haven't researched which um, agency they worked with but it is a very emotional campaign like the 89 campaign because you see people who have nothing to do with Gap, of course, because you see like Ernest Hemingway, Sammy Davis, uh, Mohamed Ali, um, like all these, I wouldn't call them personas anymore, but very much icons. Also like um, Marilyn Monroe uh, wearing khakis in their sit one situation of their life. And they're much like screenshots of a moment of their lives. And they wear these, they all wear the same pants kind of because they all look very similar uh but again you have these icons and but these pair of pants are uh, is a piece of everyone's lives and they're all interpreted very differently they all have very much different careers but it's like how you form it you can wear it if if you're a football player if you're an actress if you're a musician if you're a physicist i don't know anything you can do it it's like how you form the label and that's the idea that I like about Gap because it's really filling the gap of your persona and I also know that Mickey Drexler has a very he's very extreme when it comes to merchandising he's very much he likes to revolutionize things he's later on also board member at Apple I think from 2000 to 2015 even and this has a very crucial position in deciding uh, about the very minimalistic and futuristic design of the Apple stores as well so it's not only that he can do clothing and promotions since he's coming from Ann Taylor uh, after his time at uh, Gap he went to J Crew, for example okay you see like a certain red thread through his career he likes sophisticated mass market conservative fashion uh, but he didn't go to Abercrombie so that's nice um, I think it's also interesting I mean you see that if a company is acquiring different companies, I don't know if you can always say like, okay, it's because they have the money to, so they want more market share or something. I also feel like maybe they struggle with their own company, so they buy new things like we do. When we struggle with ourselves, we want to buy few new things that add to our personality. So um, they acquire Banana Republic in, I think, also 83. And Banana Republic has also actually pretty funny heritage history of we're going to talk about the fashion as well. Just, I think, since I'm a huge context fan, I think I thought you might be interested in that as well. 
So Banana Republic is actually a vintage store that is very much focused, surprise, it's safari fashion. Uh, I think if you have ever seen any so any Banana Republic campaign, you will know it's very much forcing you to buy a plane ticket and make a have a safari in Africa somewhere, uh, which is also something I would like to do, but without Banana Republic fashion. Um, I I also like I th I love brands that just like don't care about trends at all and just produce the same things for fifty years. I mean, it's far away from being fashionable, uh, but they don't have to. But I also think it's uh, interesting that they. Is it very consumer centric? And also I think safari fashion is, you need to watch out, you know, like politically and um, also in terms of cultural appropriation. I think safari is something, uh, you know, I don't know if I like that topic a lot. I would make it maybe a part of my DNA, which is too late for Banana Republic. They like later buy, for example, Old Navy as well, I think beginning of the nineties, uh, which is, <laughs> Me, as a European, since we're something, of course, not better, uh, we created Primark, so I'm sorry for that. Uh, Old Navy is something like the target of family's fashion. I didn't know that. I thought Old Navy is probably something like Ralph Lauren or Brooks Brothers, because it sounds like that, you know, like heritage, American and stuff. But it's not, and the name actually is coming from a French cafe or something, I heard. Anyway, so they sell like... Um, very low price promotional driven things for the whole family and later they also bought Athleta which is a sportswear brand so I think I I feel like all these runs are pretty pretty much the same which is not a surprise if a company is buying different ones they're usually trying to buy similar ones to gain more market share on the market which is here like I would call it mass market like typical mass market fashion so when did I mean we have these beautiful campaigns individuals of style we have who wore khaki and there even is one, I think that's already beginning of the 2000s, with Missy Elliott and Madonna. Vogue, uh, there is a Vogue cover with, uh, I don't know, 20 models all wearing white Gap jeans and white linen shirts, I think, from Gap. So Gap is in the moment in the 90s. But is it a surprise? What do we see in the fashion like back then? What is the fashion on the runways? It's Helmut Lang, it's Donna Karen, it's Calvin Klein, it's very much New York, it's very American, infused, and it's very minimalistic. So, of course, we have the avant-garde as well, and we have the Versace and Tom Ford and Gucci phase as well, but very strong. Also, in the mass market, is still the minimalism. And since Gap's four items, which are pants, different pants, sweats, shirts, um, it's kind of also like the sound of the, of the uh, generation in the 90s. I mean, I remember that everything I wanted was a corduroy pant from Gap and I was very happy that I got one while everybody was wearing um, uh, Miss 60 jeans. But that's exactly the problem with Miss 60. So actually it cracked with the 2000s. And the, actually there's also, it's not only that the, the reason that this big competitor came, but it's the main reason. And who is that? It's the Swedes. It's it's H and M, so H and M managed to get influenced by the style of the runways, of def of of real fashion, of designers, of trends, and implicated to their own also affordable fashion. So people suddenly had the opportunity to be part of the fashion industry, also at an affordable price. So why should I wear the Gap sweater everybody on the street is wearing? Of course, nobody wanted to have it anymore. Well, also they are having like these gap stores who were like so promotion driven that it just didn't have this prestigious. I mean, you can be mass and still have a certain degree of prestige. I have to say Zara, of course, to many of us, it is like absolute hell. But let's be honest, they have stores. If I wouldn't have a clue about fashion uh, in some malls, I can't differentiate between a Zara store and maybe like another luxury retailer. They have beautiful stores. If you went to, into a Gap store, it very much felt like Uniqlo. Uniqlo, another competitor, I think they started in 2005 or six or four or something, like beginning of 2000, Uniqlo coming with better things, collaborating with people like Jill Zander, Le Maire, et cetera. What is the USP of Gap here? So, and I have to say, it's not that I'm looking for trendy pieces also when I go to Uniqlo, but Gap, they also had horrible fits, let's be honest. They celebrated themselves for their fits. It wasn't fitting at all. So H&M came, Zara came, Primark came, Inditex killed them all, and H&M actually. They also had this very interesting campaign, it's cool because Kanye West tweeted it when he had 
had this, uh, but there were like rumors of him collaborating with Yeezy and Gap. Um, he posted it on Twitter and I think it was genius because it's really like the best fitting campaign Gap had. It was a 2004 campaign and it was directed by the director who uh, directed uh, Being John Malkovich, who was like, of course, the director back then and still is, was. And he had this extremely awkward and um, different uh, campaign where people, because there were like rumors everywhere that in 2004 that Gap is closing a lot of brick and mortar. And they wanted to have the the, the, the board members wanted to inform the people somehow in, in terms of, in some kind of campaign form. So they let him uh, direct it and it's super funny but very bizarre. And um, you see like these people going crazy in the store and just like throwing everything uh, away, getting aggressive and it was actually like okay a change is coming but it was only like streamed for a few days and then they had to take it down because people didn't get it and it just had like the opposite effect people were like even more disrupted by gap and were like what the hell is this but of course the beginning of 2000 i don't have to explain to any of you we all know what y2k is we see juicy couture we see ed hardy we see um miss 60 these very feminine sexy brands were like everywhere suddenly colorfulness was important and being different was more than important and everything that gap proclaimed kind of which is like we are all one and we all dress the same we all dress had the same items that was not the case not everybody of course in trends we always have people uh, a certain kind type of group that is wearing the same things but here we definitely had every, every everything that people wanted was to differentiate themselves so I think that was definitely the loss, but it started way early and these beautiful campaigns I think are still a very, very important part of how um, beautiful also mass market could be if it's like not dominated, of course, by different competitors and um, of the human instinct of differentiating and wanting to wear like distinguished things as well yeah and this is like actually the downfall and if we like really look at the fashion of course now we have the yeezy like 10 year collaboration of gap uh, i think it was a great decision to do something with kanye west i think he still is a very prominent figure that will stay in fashion as long as he is staying friend with uh, friends with them now as well uh, I was even actually planning to get the sweater, the black one um, of the recent one, which is like engineered by Balenciaga or anything. Probably because I read Balenciaga and I saw an affordable price. It was like 240 euros. Um, I have to say I watched some reviews and I wasn't that much amused. And since I'm not like a huge sweaters girl, it was maybe like not the perfect, perfect fit for me and end investment for me. I decided against it. Yes, I think... Um, gap will have an impact i see more i think they're definitely profiting from the y2k era uh because it just everything is like you know it's like mud and there comes a flood and the mud is coming up again this is like this is very much comparable i think to how old brands are gaining more um awareness right now and i think gap is also yeah but i think they are definitely um profiting from it i don't think it will be enough because I think the the last collaboration is My Theresa exclusive. I don't know if it's only for a restrict, restricted period of time. But um, it's not the... I mean, if you want to make this whole wheel work, you need the masses. And you will not get them at My Theresa. And you will need the brick and mortar to get more sales. And they don't have it right now. I think like Turkey is one of the very few countries that I know that still has gap stores or banana republic stores it's in europe i think everything is closed in the us also most of it so i think it's it's not that easy um but i still think it's a, it, it's a super interesting story to look at gap how they flew how it was they started as the um as the pioneers of fashion filling the gap rising being on top of the hills and then like with the downfall of selling themselves too cheap maybe not also evolving i think that's also been one of the main reasons